You don't come back from this. You don't come back from this. And a customer was misgendering me today. How, how, how are you going to rescue this boy? Yeah, have you seen this one? Yet? I just saw that. Somebody well, said let, that. Let's see it again yeah, let's and we'll react to it. Yeah. People wonder why we need a union at Starbucks. And I am literally about to quit. Like, I, I don't know if I'm going to do it, but like, I really want to. I almost walked out today. <laughs> And I'm crying in the back room right now, and I must cut on the floor. It's just, I like I get I'm like a full time student. I get scheduled for 25 hours a week, and then on weekends they schedule me the entire day open to close. I'm on the schedule for eight and a half hours, both Saturday and Sunday. I'm like three and a half hours into my shift. There's so many customers, and we have four people on the floor all day. <laughs> Only five people were put on the schedule laugh. and somebody had to call out and there are four people running the whole store and there's so many customers and there's possibly scheduled five people. <laughs> we only have 13 people employed at this store and there's so many customers. And they had to... <laughs> All right. So I immediately feel terrible because I, I well, wanted I just... to... I, there was a part of me that was like, I want to be compassionate. But the question to you is, let's say this boy was dropped off on your doorstep. How would you fix this kid? Here's what the young man needs. The young man needs a man to look up to. Forever throughout time, young men had a man, had a character, had a role model, had somebody that they could identify with, and they would have other men in society. So they were taking on those man characteristics early on and often. I talk often about how uh, the word teenager wasn't a thing until 1944. Hmm. You were 12, you were 13, you were taking on massive amounts of responsibility. Yeah. There was no uh, extension of childhood. And so first and foremost for this young man, he's gonna have me leading by example because I can't be a hypocrite if anything I'm asking him to do, I need to be doing it myself but he's gonna start taking on massive responsibility. So he's coming with me for the week. We're gonna start handling chores. He's gonna start taking on responsibilities that quickly become his own. He's gonna find out what a standard is and he's gonna get those uh, assigned immediately. Then we're gonna jump into something, we're gonna jump into something physical. We talk a lot about mental health, which we are seeing an issue here, but we forget how closely tied that is to physical health mm. for our young men. Yeah, And it actually goes physical first, mental second. If there is physical health that is present, if that young man feels confident about his capabilities from a physical standpoint, it doesn't mean he's got to be the, you know, a forever athlete or this ultimate stuff, but he feels like he's healthy. He feels like he's in decent shape. He feels like he looks good. He feels like he has a physical presence that people notice. The mental part of that follows for a young man. It doesn't go the other way. So the first thing you said, which I think is absolutely true, he needs a male ideal to look up to. Mm. Uh, but I realized though that's true, you can't do that first with someone like that because that kid, that boy, no way he's looking at the men that we count as heroes and counting them heroes as well. They'll look at him as oppressive patriarchs who are For terrible sure. abusers and whatever. And I don't think he, he possesses the basic uh, heroic character traits of the men we admire uh, to any extent. So he couldn't possibly revere them and want to emulate them. Instead, he's been trained uh, by weak men and women to despise the strong parts of masculinity, stuff that builds and protects the world. This is, to me, different than just being in trouble. I am looking at a vessel that is completely broken because this is, it's almost like an infant and it's almost like, and I'm going to, you know, just say it like it is. There's, there's boys and there's girls. Yeah. Okay. There's two different things. And that's, that's where I stand on that. And to, to me, what he's exhibiting is more toddler feminine type energy. Yeah. Right. And so when I say there's got to be the man that is there for him to, uh, you know, and I may have said, look up to, I like that you're making me clarify on that. I, I don't think if he comes to me for a week, he's not going to look up to me. He's going to yeah. see me as the representation of, yeah. but it's also going to be the only exposure that he gets. And it's also the ruthless elimination to what it absolutely cannot look like. Do your boys speak uh, Chinese? Uh, no, they do not. So, okay. They do so, not. No. Well, how come? Um, there's a lot of a other simple, things that we need to teach them yeah, first that are more important. That's a very simple answer. Yeah. They're not exposed to it. We don't live in China. 
they're not exposed to it. Nobody's speaking Chinese to them. So nobody expect them. Nobody expects them to speak Chinese. Though, though that that's less true now. I mean, China owns a lot of the United States now. All, almost all our politicians, for instance, uh, for, for sure. <laughs> and the platform that this young young man was crying on. And China will make sure that yeah. that is the video that goes viral here. Yeah. But I guarantee you that video is not going viral in China. That's freaking alpaca, man. When when I see you hold yeah, this, I think I, will, uh, I think I cannot say you. <laughs> Try to drink that in a masculine yeah, way. Yeah. Let me take a I sip of my coffee. coffee. Like a man. Ah. A man is built strong so that he may lovingly carry the burdens of others. This kid can't carry a temporary part-time job. That is too weak for a world that is too hard and strong. He's not going to make it. He's not making it now. Right. All right. So quick review. Somewhere in that, uh, that kid is is someone who loves the movie Braveheart. Somewhere in there. Yeah. Of like, I would like to think you, so. You yeah. gotta break them, you know, mix everything up, bring some inspiration up, and, and then while you, you got basically the car hood open, yes. uh, you know, find the crossed wires and, and wire it in back. You're just getting uh, back to factory settings. So we've got to break the young man and there's a physical component that goes into that. And when, again, we're saying breaking, we're not going in there and saying we're going to physically beat the young man out of it. We're saying we're going to put him through some physical things that unlock the factory settings, the mental side that he's got there. So we're going to come on from the physical standpoint and we're going to start providing opportunities to be responsible. Self-esteem comes from responsibilities being met. That's when I say responsibility first, freedom next. There's all, all kinds of ways we can take that, but... We also can take it, the freedom, the peace of mind that I have comes because I know I'm wildly responsible within my life. So he's going to get a bunch of responsibilities. He's going to catch what a good man looks like before we can ever tell him what it is. Uh, and we're going to be solid for that young man. Barry, deep in that kid's inner psyche is, is a desire to protect and provide That's successfully. You bet. And he's never done it. And he's awful at it. He can't even take care of his own needs and will never be a man until he walks those ancient paths and carries those ancient stones. And there is no shortcut and there's no substitute. And that kid will always be crying For in sure. the back room of whatever uh, workplace is unfortunate enough to hire him. Mm. Guys take it as a cautionary tale that kids need mothers and they desperately need fathers.